The British are coming. The British are coming. This was a taxing week. In math, we focused on finding factors. We also had the opportunity to return to multiplying by one digit numbers. In the world of reading, we focused on the childhood of Walt Disney and scrutinized a technical article called Teaching Snoopy to Dance, which talks about how the Charlie Brown cartoons were made. Students then had the opportunity to create their own animated cartoon. In writing, we focused on mentor texts as we moved into writing memoirs. We learned that memoirs are written based on something that is truly important to the author. In social studies, we moved from the French and Indian War to the tumultuous early days of the Revolutionary War. In a simulation called the King's M&M's, student colonists' blood began to boil as King George III and members of Parliament levied taxes and two student tax collectors felt the wrath of the colonists. In science, cloud types were the focus, as well as weather instruments, weather tools like the wind vane, for example, anemometer, that kind of thing. We also had the opportunity to learn about how a barometer can indicate whether or not there's uh, a storm coming or fair weather coming, that kind of thing. Keep watching more about this week's Taxing Week can be found in this week's video version of Issue 11 of Mr. McCoy's Weekly Log. The spelling test for Unit 9 will be on Friday, October 17. Your child will then, of course, take the pretest for the next spelling unit, which is Unit 10. It features our controlled vowel words, the er sound, such as rehearse, R-E-H-E-A-R-S-E, -E -E, or perfume, P-E-R-F-U-M-E. Conferences are coming. Conferences are coming. Be sure to look in this week's edition for the conference schedule because I get to meet with you next week and I can't wait to talk to you about your child's progress and as we make plans for your child as the days and weeks continue for this grand and glorious school year. So be sure to check out issue 11 of Mr. McCoy's weekly log. You'll find the conference schedule just to make sure you know when you're supposed to come because great things are coming. I have heard that some parents spend many school nights supervising and struggling with their children's homework. Here are six tips to get your kids to do as much for themselves as possible. Number one, start now with the it's your homework not mine stance when, hopefully, the stakes are low, rather than in high school when grades really start to matter. Remind yourself that having your child take responsibility is much more important than getting the answers right every time. Number two, if the work seems overwhelming and your child is anxious, show your child how to calm down and tackle each assignment. Number three, find and use resources. For example, when my son was having difficulty understanding double digit subtraction and parents were instructed not to use the term takeaway as I was taught at his age, I went to the math books website there I found an animation that explained the proper methods and terminology. My son and I watched the subtraction segment over and over until he and I finally understood the process. More homework help as you continue to watch this week's edition of Mr. McCoy's Weekly Log. As always, there are lots of great websites in this week's edition of Mr. McCoy's Weekly Log. One is called The Road to Revolution. It's a game featuring our topic in social studies. There is also there are also links to other great topics such as how to avoid struggles with homework. There's also a segment in this week's edition of the video version of Mr. McCoy's weekly log that talks about that as well. More homework tips moving on to number 4. Let your child ask a friend for help. Kids tend to relate to each other better than adults, especially when they've been sitting in the same classroom and learning the same material. 
Number five, figure out where your child needs extra guidance and give assistance for certain subjects, but not all classes. If they can develop independence in at least one area of homework, they are more likely to learn how to do homework in other areas. And number six, let your child make mistakes. Maybe I should say that again. Let your child make mistakes. Even if you see an error, don't correct the homework. If your child consistently hands in perfect homework, Mr. McCoy may make the reasonable assumption that your child doesn't need any help. Keep watching more about homework success coming up in this week's edition of Mr. McCoy's Weekly Log. And speaking of homework, homework is not as much of a chore if your child has a place that is pleasant to work and do his or her homework. In this week's edition of Mr. McCoy's Weekly Log, you'll see a section that talks about how to create the perfect homework place, like a desk and great lighting and supplies, those kinds of things. So please check that out. Homework does not have to be a struggle at home if everything is set up the way it should be set up in order to make homework something that, well, maybe not enjoyable, but at least something that is not dreaded. These students are the best of the best, but the bottom line is they need to take responsibility for their homework. Do your kids sometimes persuade you to let them off the hook when it comes to homework? Fight that temptation. Research shows that homework is good for children. It can boost academic learning and teach them responsibility. When she was a child, Mary Russell knew that going to school was her job. The time set aside to complete homework assignments was considered sacred. It was always a place in our home for homework, Russell recalls. My grandmother, who spoke only Italian, would bring my brother and me sandwiches and milk while we studied. And says Russo, although her grandmother couldn't tell them, her actions showed us the value of what we were doing. Children have to understand that their work, schoolwork, is important, she asserts, and they get that message when families make homework a priority. Here are some smart study tips from the Sylvan Learning Center. Consider your course of action if you disagree with homework assignments. Your objective should not be to insulate your child from work because he or she has a negative opinion about it. Nor should you undercut the teacher's authority. Your child must learn to deal in life with work situations that he or she may not like or agree with. Verify your child's progress. Keep up with your child's progress by discussing school and subjects with him or her. And sometimes you have to let your child face the consequences of his or her actions or lack of action. Your child may not exercise the discipline required to pass up a desired activity to get an assignment done on time. He or she may fail a test or an entire subject. You may have to let go rather than protect your child from the consequences. The Halloween party is coming. The Halloween party is coming Friday, October 31st. We will have our Halloween party from approximately 2.15 to 2.45. Your child is welcome to dress up. Uh, in my class, I allow students to come to school in their costumes as long as it's not going to be a disruption in class. I will be coming as someone very appropriate to Galaxy 313. So your child is welcome to wear his or her costume to school. Liberty Oaks policy though states that the costume should not have anything violent in it, no weapons, no gore, that kind of thing. And if possible, have your child dress up as a book character. 